God, would you then take those same people who mm. are in wickedness, Hallelujah. implant your purity, mm. and cause them to burn with the fire of the Holy Spirit mm. from this very Jesus. Moment. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to get into your presence together to praise you in the assembly of the righteous to proclaim that we love your salvation we love what you've done for us in jesus christ that you've brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light that we might proclaim the marvelous excellencies of the one who called us lord i love what the scripture says when it says let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you let those who love your salvation continually say the Lord is magnified or the Lord is great. You're great, Lord, and you're greatly to be praised. If it weren't for you tonight, we would still be sitting in darkness and gloom without hope and without God in the world. We would not have this purpose of glorifying your name while we're yet on the earth with a rich expectancy that when we get to see you face to face, we'll enter into the joy of our master. So we thank you for your calling us and choosing us and bringing us into your presence and making us holy and blameless in your sight so that we can enjoy fellowship with you and the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We love you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah in the 55th chapter. Isaiah 55, and I'm in the ESV, the English Standard Version. And the scripture says this, it says, come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good. And delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. So those are the few verses that we're going to be getting into tonight. And so let's start again with verse 1. Come, everyone who thirsts. So the call of God to us is that we would come to the Lord. Well, who is he speaking to? To, to come to him. Well, the scripture says everyone who thirsts. I love what Jesus says in the scriptures because he says, you cannot be my disciple unless you hate your life. There has to be this realization inside of my heart, no matter where I go, no matter what I do, no matter what I try to find pleasure and satisfaction in, my heart is never glad. My heart is never satisfied. I'm never at rest. It's what the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 63, verse 1, if we can turn there. Psalm chapter 63 and verse 1. The scripture says this in Psalm 63, 1. It says, O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. The realization of David here is that in this world, there is no satisfaction. In this world, there is no fresh spring of water, but with you is the fountain of life. As the scripture says in Psalm chapter 36, that you give us to drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light do we see light. The scriptures speak of an evil thing that the children of Israel did, which was forsake the fountain of living water. So there's this place of being satisfied in God, but it's an evil thing for those who have been satisfied with God, have tasted and seen that God is good and that he can satisfy, to then go to other cisterns to try to gain satisfaction. When you're at wit's end, you don't go to your God to pour out your heart. You go to the world and you indulge in their sin. This is not the life that, that Christ has called us to. And so Christ is calling us by the prophet Isaiah to come to him, everyone who thirsts. The only eligibility that you have to have to be able to come to the Lord is that you're thirsty, is an admittance that my life is nothing without God. 
So I'm going to go to God and I'm going to go find satisfaction in him whom my soul delights. He says, come to the waters. Well, what does the water speak of? Well, that's fascinating because the scripture says that there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The Bible speaks of the waters of life in reference to the Holy Spirit. And he who drinks of the Holy Spirit will never thirst again. These are the living waters that Christ is speaking of. The Holy Spirit who, who quenches our spiritual thirst. And when we drink of him, we feel no need to go pursue satisfaction out in the world and in the sin of the world. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money... Come, buy, and eat. Listen to what he keeps saying. Come, come, come. Meaning we have a choice in all of this. We can choose to draw near to God. And if we do, we'll experience the blessings that this passage portrays. Satisfaction to the soul. Or we can reject this offer to come. But what a foolish thing to reject a free feast. And people love free food. Advertise you're going to have free food and many people will come to your event. Well, here Christ is saying, come, buy wine and milk. Well, I have no money. Well, good. Without money and without price. So there's no excuse that could keep us away from Christ. Christ is free and his offer is to all men. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Meaning this. If you are a whosoever, you're a person that walks the faith of the earth. If you trust in Christ, you will be saved and you will find satisfaction to your soul. Come by wine and milk without money and without price. Now, verse two, look at this. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Meaning you toil all week to spend your money upon some enjoyable thing that you like to do but when you're done with that thing it leaves you empty and you're still craving more you continually spend your money on uh concerts or you spend your money on going on vacation or you spend it thinking a new car will make you happy when the car you had was working well why do you spend your money for that which is not bread meaning that can never satisfy you that's never going to delight your soul and day by day make you happy. It's just a vehicle to get you from here to there. And when you try to make the created things what satisfies your soul, you're in a mess because you're in idolatry and God will never bless it. There's no grace on it. There's no life there. There's no joy there. There's no peace there. A car can't give you peace, but Christ can. A vacation can't give you peace. You can admire God's creation, but you have the same strife you had at home with your, with your relatives when you're on vacation. It never disappears, but Christ will comfort your heart no matter where you are. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. And that's what makes this all the more abysmal. If we look that Christ's offer is that he is free for all men, the God who should charge us something, or I should say who could charge us something, who could have required our lives and slaughtered us because of the sins that were so grievous that we had committed are in his sight. He could have done away with us, but the one who is of infinite value says, I'm free to all men. All you have to do is come with an appetite. So will we come with an appetite and say, Christ, I want to give you my life. Will you satisfy my heart and make me glad in you? Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? When you can have bread that's free, meaning the words of Christ. Jesus says that he is the living bread that came down from heaven. He came to satisfy the world. The scripture says in John chapter 10 verse 10 that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Christ came to give us life and life more abundantly. It's that wellspring of eternal life that we experience when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. Our hearts are made glad in him. We have rivers of living water flowing from our innermost being. And a question that all Christians need to ask themselves is, can I look at this text of scripture that says I'll have rivers of joy, rivers of peace, rivers of life, an overflow of abundant joy that's radiating in my heart? Can we say we have that or do we read a passage like that and realize we don't? Do we have rivers of living water flowing within us? 
a glorious inexpressible joy that we can barely utter from our lips because we know our sins are forgiven and God's word is speaking to us day by day? Or are we miserable Christians because we're eating of things that don't satisfy us and trying to make them the constant of our life? But look at this. Verse 2, second half, it says, Listen diligently to me and eat what is good. If you listen closely to the words of God, you will eat what is good. You're not satisfied going um, to this party, then to this family function, then to this big entertainment thing you've been looking forward to from going to all these different events. There's nothing that ever satisfies you day by day, moment by moment. When you get up in the morning, you're happy that you get to live another day. The Lord says, if you listen diligently to me, meaning if you don't treat his words as carelessly and brush them aside, but rather you look intently into the perfect law of liberty, as James said, and you put it into practice and you're an effectual doer, the Bible says you'll be blessed in all of your doing. So the one that looks diligently, pays close attention, will eat what is good. So if we're not eating what is good, the reality is this. We're not paying attention to what Christ has said. If I'm not experiencing an overflow of the wonderful salvation of God in my heart and in my life and it manifesting through me, I'm not drinking deeply of the Holy Spirit. But you know, that also whets my appetite. I can drink deeply of the Holy Spirit. So I need to, in this moment, calm myself, quiet myself, and take a drink from the Lord who wants to fill me with his grace. Listen diligently to me. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Look at this and delight yourselves in rich food. Delight yourself in food that is rich, spiritual food that is rich. I love what one translation says. Let your soul delight itself in abundance. What that means is this. The Lord has made a wonderful offer to us. And our distractions are trying to pull us away as a current from hell. So the Lord is saying this, I've given you my invitation. You can delight yourself in as much of me as you want. And I promise you, if you come to me, I'll satisfy you. So let yourself come. Don't let your passions rage and your lust rage, and your desire for forbidden things or other things or the deceitfulness of riches pull you away, but rather say to your soul, soul, we're going to seek the Lord and we're going to praise him with all that is within me. As David said, my soul shall be satisfied as if I had just eaten of the richest feast. David, the psalmist, knew of this reality that he was offered food, spiritual food from God to nourish his soul, to make him glad in his God. Listen diligently, listen closely and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. When I hear the term delight yourself, I no longer think Christianity is, is a walk that I have to do against my will. Do I have a will that if untended to will lead me in the path of sin and on the broad road to destruction? Yes. But if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, his desires become my desires. And if I'll yield to them, they'll manifest through me and my heart will be happy because God blesses obedience. I was thinking about this today. There's a day set aside where we will all stand before God and the Bible says that the Lord will say to some, enter into the joy of your master, well done, good and faithful servant. And I was thinking, there's a present reality before there's the future reality. One day I'll stand before the Lord and the Lord will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into my joy. But the call that he's given to every believer in Jesus Christ is this. Enter into my joy right now. Enter into my joys. Enter into my peace. The joy of the Holy Spirit that we can experience now 
is the same joy that's set apart for us to enjoy for eternity. It's just then we'll be able to experience it in maximal pleasure. But now it sustains us and gives us strength for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Listen diligently to me. And if we do, if we listen to God and what he says, we'll eat what is good and we'll delight ourselves in rich food. These words are rich. These words are not garbage. These are the words of the living God, the infinite God who knows all things, sees all things, knows how to navigate this life, knows how to get us from where we are to where he wants us to be and sanctifies us and works in us both to willing to do for his good pleasure. He's of good reputation. The reputation of the Lord lasts for generations. We can trust in him. We can trust in his resume. He's delivered for years and he will deliver for years to come. And ultimately he will keep us safe unto that day when we stand before him face to face, holy and blameless because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalm 104.15 that the Lord gives wine to make the heart glad. He gives us oil to make our face shine. And he gives us bread to strengthen our hearts. Wine, speaking of the forgiveness of sins, makes our hearts glad when the revelation we've been forgiven hits our hearts. Then we think about oil to make our face shine. The Holy Spirit's upon us. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. I'm not running empty. I'm overflowing with God. And then we think of the bread that daily sustains us. Give me this day my daily bread. The bread of Christ, the word of God, we live by. It strengthens us and causes us to carry on. Now look at this in verse 3. It says, Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. The people that incline their ear to the Lord and want to hear what he has to say are going to have to draw near to God. And then they have this wonderful promise in the book of James. If you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. And then here's what will happen. You'll hear him because you're near to him and you're attentive to his speaking and to his voice. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear Hear the voice of the Son of God calling us out of our graves, as John 5 talks about. Hear that your soul may live. If we'll listen to the word of Christ, if we'll pay close attention to what he's saying, what he's speaking, the, the fullness of God that he's offering to us, the love of God that's been freely given to us and poured out upon us, and has sent Jesus Christ to die for us. That is the demonstration of God's love. If we'll come and receive it, we will live and we will find life abundantly and satisfying. And we will understand these Bible verses that let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. You won't pretend to be glad in God. You'll be feasting in God. I heard this one quote from this, this man of God from the past, and he said this. He said, I found it the most important and greatest task of my day, that first thing I would find my soul happy in the Lord. And may that be us, that when we get out of bed, we understand this, that we are alive for one reason and one reason alone, to delight ourselves in the one who is of utmost delight that we would know the endless treasures that are available to us in Jesus Christ. As the Bible says, in him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And the Bible says this, that when your heart is filled with wisdom, knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. I'll tell you why you're not enjoying God, his word, his provision for your spiritual life. It's because sin kills spiritual desire for Christ. If you love sin, the word of God will be like you eating broccoli when you desire McDonald's. But if your palate gets sanctified by the Holy Spirit to love spiritual truths found in the word of God, this will become the primary source of your delight. And though you try to enjoy other things, other entertainments, you'll notice you don't like to do anything apart from Christ 
you like to enjoy all things as an act of gratitude through Christ because you never again want to be separated from the one you were separated from again. I just want to end with this. Let your soul delight itself. Christ has said he's satisfying. Believe him and by faith pursue him and find him to be satisfying to the soul. What's satisfying? Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Though I don't see him now, I believe in him and as I trust in him, my heart is so happy I can barely stand it. It's a peace that surpasses understanding that in the trials of life, I have trouble finding peace, but then all of a sudden, a peace that surpasses my comprehension guards my heart my mind and my heart in Jesus Christ? You can't muster this up. You know when you're encountering God because when you didn't have peace and something was troubling you to the point of your soul was in utter despair, somehow peace penetrated you and you can even forget the things that you were worried about and that's when you know you've encountered God. When your soul's in despair and you need hope, And all of a sudden, you start abounding in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You'll notice the Holy Spirit come and took away your despair and replaced it with hope for the days to come for the glory of the name of Christ. But there's no hope in putting your trust in the people of this world, in the medicines of this world, in the entertainments of this world, in your favorite ball team of this world. None of that's ever going to satisfy your soul. No show is ever going to satisfy your soul. No movie is ever going to satisfy your soul. No food item is ever going to satisfy your soul other than the living bread that came down from heaven to give his life for all of the world. So everyone who thirsts, come. Come to the waters. You don't have any money? Come. Because though God is more costly than gold, he gives himself out for free to the hungry heart that would desire him. You're miserable? Come to Christ. If you're happy, come to Christ and worship Christ for the joyous blessings that he's brought into your life. Listen diligently to the Lord and you'll eat what is good. You'll partake of the finest food. Don't settle for the things of this world when you've been offered infinite riches in the word of God. Be blessed and thank you for tuning in.